Hi judges, welcome to another segment of One Arliwag Memorial High School Senior High School Math TV. Last time we were able to get the coordinates of the foci, the vertices, and the covertices. For today, what if we're now given an equation and we're asked to transform this equation into the standard form and then give the coordinates of the foci, the vertices, the covertices? Okay. So we are given here 9x squared plus 16y squared minus 126x plus 64y is equal to 71. So in order for us to get the coordinates of the center, the vertices, and the covertices, and also the foci, all we have to do is to complete the square. So I am um, very clear and I know that you will be able to answer this problem through completing the square because I have already discussed it to you with some of my videos. So if we, ha we have given 9x squared plus 16y squared minus 126x plus 64y is equal to 71, all we have to do is to complete the terms in x and complete the terms in y. Therefore, we'll be having 9x squared minus 126x plus 16y squared plus 64y is equal to 71. The next thing that we need to do is to factor out the coefficients of x squared and y squared. Again, the next thing that we need to do is to factor out the coefficients of x squared and y squared. And in this case, 9x squared, therefore we need to factor out 9 and we'll be having x squared minus 126 divided by 9. Okay, that becomes 14x plus this is now the time that we need to complete the square. Negative 14 divided by 2 is negative 7. Negative 7 squared is equal to 49. Okay. Plus, so this is now equal to 71 plus 49. We're not yet done because we factor out 9. Therefore, we need to multiply this by 9. Again, do not forget that if you factor out a term, or the coefficients of x squared, in order for this one to be equal, you need to multiply this term to the value of this one. In this case, that is 49 times 9. That is the right side. Okay, plus, bring out y squared, multiply it to 16, plus 64 divided by, 64y divided by 6, Okay, so this should be 16, not y squared. This should be 16 times y squared plus 64, 64y divided by 16. That becomes 4y plus 4. Okay, plus what do we add here? That should be 4 times 16. I hope this is clear. Therefore, we're now ready to factor out and we'll now be having 9 times x squared minus 14x plus 49 will give us x minus 7 quantity squared plus 16 times y squared plus 4y plus 4 will give us y plus 2 quantity squared is now equal to 71 49 times 9 is 441 4 times 16 is 64 adding these values will now be having 576 Okay, always remember that the right side of an ellipse or an equation of an ellipse is always equal to 1. Therefore, we need to divide both sides by 576. Divide this by 576 or I'll just divide this one by one. This is 576, 576. Okay, technique. So in order for us to get the denominator, all you have to do is this one. This should be 576. 576 divided by 9, that gives us 64. And then retain x minus 7 quantity squared. 576 divided by 16, that gives us a value of 36. And then retain y plus 2 quantity squared is now equal to the right side, 576 divided by 576, which is 1. Therefore, this is now the standard equation of, of an ellipse. Okay, it now takes the form x minus h quantity squared over a squared since 64 is greater than 36. And we'll now be calling this as major horizontal axis.
Okay? So, we also have y minus k quantity squared over b squared is equal to 1. Therefore, our a squared now is equal to 64. Our a now is equal to plus minus. What is our a? Our a is equal to plus minus 8. b squared is equal to 36. Therefore, our b is plus minus 6. And how do we get c? c now is equal to the square root of a squared minus b squared. Therefore, c is equal to the square root of 64 minus 36. And we'll now be having what is 64 minus 36. 64 minus 36 will be 64 minus 36. How much is 64 minus 36? That becomes square root of 28. And what is the square root of 28? Therefore, the square root of 28 is 2 square root of 7. Okay, why 2 square root of 7? Because this is also equal to 7 times 4. Okay. 7 times 4, square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 7 is just square root of 7. Therefore, C now is plus minus 2 square root of 7. So, we're now ready to get the center. Therefore, the center is located at... Where is the center? The center is located at 7 and... Where is the center located? 7 and negative 2. Okay. For the foci, for the coordinates of the foci, that is H plus minus C, K. Therefore, the foci now is located at F1. It is located at 7 minus 2 square root of 7. And then our K is negative 2. Therefore, it is equal to 7 minus 2 square root of 7 is in decimal form, it becomes 1.7 and then negative 2 is the y-coordinate. For the f2, we'll now be having 7 plus 2 square root of 7, negative 2. In decimal form, this is equal to 12.3 and 12.3, negative 2. And for the vertices, the vertices would be h plus minus a and k. v1 now is, for the v1, we'll be having h is 7 plus minus, what is our a? 8 and k, okay? Plus minus, so let's say this is minus for the v1. So this is 7 minus 8, 7 minus 8 negative 2. Therefore, it is, it is now 7 minus 8 is negative 1, negative 2. For v2, we'll be having 7 plus 8, negative 2. Therefore, that is 15, negative 2. And for the co-vertices, so I will just write it here. For the co-vertices, that is W, which is equal to H, K plus minus B. Therefore, we'll be having W1. What is our H? Our H is 7. Our K is negative 2. Negative 2 minus. What is our B? Our B is... RB is 6, so that is minus 6. Therefore, this is 7, negative 8. Okay, so that is 7, negative 8. And R for W2, that is 7, negative 2 plus 6. That is 7, positive 4. So we're, we're now ready to... We're now ready to sketch the ellipse. So let's start with the center. The center is located at 7, negative 2. So this is 7, negative 2. This is our center. Center 7, negative 2. And then we now have the foci, 1.7, negative 2. So 1.7, negative 2. So this is F1. And for our F2, that is 12.3. 12.3 and then negative 2. So this is F2. For V1, that is negative 1, negative 2. So, we'll now be having negative 1, negative 2. So, this is our V1. And for our V2, that is 15, negative 2. 15, negative 2. This is our V2. For our co-vertices, 7, negative 8. This is 7. And then, this is negative 8. This is W1. And for our W2, that is 7, 4. 7, 4. This is now W2. Okay, so connecting this, 
Again, our ellipse is horizontal. And our ellipse will somehow look like this. So I will not anymore draw a solid line. So Okay, I'm trying to draw the ellipse. Okay, so this is now um, the sketch of an ellipse with an equation. X minus 7 quantity squared over 64 plus Y plus 2 quantity squared over 36 is equal to 1. So if you're asked to get the length of the major axis, length of the major axis, therefore that is just 2A and that is 2 times 8, we have 16 units. Length of the minor, that would be 2B, therefore that is 2, times what is our B? 6, therefore that is 12 units. So, if you have questions regarding this video, regarding this problem, please do not hesitate to message me or to comment. So, I am open to your suggestions. So you may message me on Facebook or on YouTube. Once again, I am Engineer Judd Edward Hernandez saying that mathematics is always fun. Goodbye and God bless.